Uh, hi, I'm Kelsey. I'm the showgroom for David Will. I've been working for David for five and a half years. I've been a showgroom for seven years. And I've been living in Germany for 10 years. And before that, I lived in America and I was in university. Um, well, I came over to Germany because I was going to be the next big rider and found out that it takes <laughs> way too much that I don't have to be the next rider, but I love horses and I love taking care of them and uh, I transitioned into grooming. Um, currently I look after seven, but uh, David has seven at home and we have uh, three girls at home, including uh, David's business partner, Richard Vogel. Um, his showroom too. This is Zach. Uh, his full name is Zacharado Blue. Um, he was uh, he is owned by um, a very longtime supporter and friend of David, um, and a really really nice man, really good horseman. Uh, his name is Klaus Isaac. We got him um, as like a prospective five star horse and uh, we started out really slowly with him and so we brought him up and he's actually turned out to be a really good five-star horse now. He is the definition of your riding, average riding school pony. He, uh, he goes along with absolutely everything, but he can be a stubborn little, uh, little boy sometimes and uh, if he wants to do something he'll go and do it. And he's a bit cheeky sometimes, he likes to subtly take a bite out of you. But it's very, he can't open his mouth so wide because his mouth is so very, very, very small. So it's just the two front teeth that get you sometimes. Oh, that really depends. Um, depends on where you're based, what country you are, how many horses you have, and if you have a license to drive the truck or not. Uh, for me, say coming here, um, we normally, I drive the whole time, but this time we took a transport company um, because there's different rules and regulations you have to do with your trucks coming into England. And uh, so for us, it was easier to take a transport company here. So for, I left uh, my stable on Tuesday at six o'clock in the morning to get to the transport company Gallison in the Netherlands at 10.30 in the morning because then the ministry, you have to have um, the toll company, like the, the toll police and uh, the ministry vet, the state health vet for animals come and they both have to check out the horses. And then uh, you book your ferry ticket or your train ticket and we had the train. So then uh, we had the train at 9.54 in the morning. So we left at one o'clock in the morning to get to the train. And uh, for driving regulations, you have to stop every four and a half hours um, and rest for 45 minutes, or you have to do a 15 minute, different 15 minute breaks in the four and a half hours. So what we did is we stopped for 45 minutes and uh, we get out, we open up the windows for the horses so they can breathe. We check to make sure the ventilators are working. We check to see if they're too warm or not with blankets on, if you need to put blankets on or you need to take them off. It's really helpful because in the trucks are temperature regulators, so you can always see what the temperature in the back of the horse part is. And then uh, we make sure they have enough hay in their hay nuts. We personally hang uh, water buckets in the trucks so they can drink whenever they want to. But uh, every time we stop, we also order, offer them some like uh, bran mash water too to make sure they're actually drinking. Uh, <laughs> not really. That would, uh, in definition, be having a home. <laughs> I am a home in my apartment for maybe, at most, one week every month for a grand total. If, if, if it's a good month, I'm home for one week during the month. Um, my home is where my horses are. So wherever they are, I feel at home. The lack of sleep. <laughs> you have your night classes. If you're driving, uh, sometimes you're driving all through the night and then you have to work all day. Um, but 
Also, the best part about being a groom is the other grooms who are always there to help you and make everything easier, and especially the Istanbul managers like Patrick that's here. They're out here to, make our li to help us and make our lives easy. I think getting onto the team for the Europeans was probably the coolest and getting silver medal uh, at the Europeans was one of the coolest things that really helps motivate you and was a really, really cool experience to go through. Um, this is my Prince Van Dorpra Heide. We call him Prince or Princeton. Um, he is a Belgian warm blood. Um, he was bred by the Philip Hartz family, so that's the Dorper Heide uh, Storuri. And uh, he is owned by David and Richie's company, Vogel and Will Equestrian. Well, he is what in English we call flea bitten gray. So nor when he was younger, he started out quite, quite dark. And then uh, as he got older, uh, the gray kind of faded and it came out with uh, little brown dots everywhere. Um, well, in all horses' passports, no matter where they're from, um, the vets, when you, they get their passports, have to, <laughs> have to uh, put down all of the different markings on the horses. Like, uh, he has some scars on him, so they're, <laughs> so they're, uh, they're marked down. And also, all of the different ways the hair moves. <laughs> You're really not helping right now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, horses also have another way to be marked, is by the way the hair uh, is. We call them morals. Um, so wherever there's a whirl on a horse, it has to be marked in the passport, so it's an identifying characteristic on the horse. Like, he has a very long one here and here. They can be small, they can be oval shaped, they can be all the way up the neck and the chest. And another way that we have to identify them for the FEI and in the passports is every horse is microchipped on the neck. So every time you go to a show, they run the scanner over the neck and you check the chip number against the passport. Well, there's different ways. Um, normally, if you have a horse that runs, uh, like he runs really, really cold, his body temperature is normally quite cold. It's around 37 degrees, which is, above, is below normal for a horse. Um, he, I don't have to clip him so much, like body clip him so that he doesn't overheat. But him, his normal body temperature is nearly 38.1. And so I have to clip him so that he doesn't overheat so much. But uh, you can get, in every country except for Germany, you can bring uh, wind machines, ventilators, <laughs> to the shows <laughs> and set up fans for the horses in the boxes so they have like a constant breeze on them. Germany, it's not allowed because of firefighting regulations. But, uh, also, you can wash them off during the day if they start to get too warm. And in Miami, like we were giving them ice baths to keep them cool. So there's many different ways. The most important thing is make sure that they have enough water and that they're drinking enough fluids. That's the most important thing to keep them cool. I do. My rider actually encourages it. But if you, if you don't do it so often like me, it's very hard to then walk for three days <laughs> and take care of the horses at the same time. So I don't do it so often, no. <laughs> do things their way. Don't force them to do things. If, like, of course they have to go out for walks and be ridden and everything. But if you can see they want to be left alone, leave them alone. If they want to, if they look like they're anxious and they want to come out of the box, let them out of the box. Like, let them be horses. That's the best thing you can do. Be their friend, be on their side. Mm -hmm.